All right, welcome to this special episode of the Joyful Business Podcast. Today's topic is why your faith will make or break your business. It's a fact. And I'm here with my beautiful sister in Christ. She's a powerful woman of God and a I'm blessed to have her as a client as well, Lucrece Bundy. She has helped hundreds of families successfully adopt children as an adoption attorney. And in that capacity, she saw a huge gap, a gap of information and assistance that should be available to her clients, right? Those looking to adopt. And she realized this gap cost them significantly, both financially and emotionally. And so she decided to create a, a separate business, an adjunct business, a coaching business, where she could provide unbiased, streamlined, she could be the unbiased, streamlined source of everything you need for a successful adoption and specifically for Christian families, which is so amazing. So let us welcome Lucrece to the show. Hi, Judy. So happy to be here. Oh my goodness. This is Friday afternoon. This is like my last thing on the calendar. I'm so excited to be here with you. So yes. let us, um, you know, everybody can read about your amazingness in the bio, but let's talk about your early years. I mean, you've been, you went to school in Nebraska. That's where you are now. But I saw in your bio that you are a West African native. So come on, let's, let's find out the story of how God moved to get you to Nebraska. Yeah. So, yep, I was born in Benin, West Africa. It's a really tiny country next to Nigeria. And I never dreamed that I would be where I am today. Um, it really was just God's hand, even moving us here. My father died when I was very young, so left my mom as a as a widow and with four young children. And so she decided at some point to bring us here so that we could have a better life, better education. Um, and so that's what she did. So that's how we ended up here. And that's basically the story. I mean, there's there's not anything else to that except that it was just family dynamics and my mom really wanting what was best for her children. And that's what brought us here to the States. Okay. I'm nosy and I'm curious and I'm sure I'm not the only one. So did your mom have family here? Like, did she know anybody here? She did not. She just took a step of faith. She loves traveling. And if you met my mom, you would know what I mean. She's very adventurous. She's um, basically, there's not a lot that she's afraid of. Um, and so she just came here on her own and just decided to start a new life for us. She had traveled internationally many times before when we were young. Um, and she would be gone for months at a time for businesses or just to get her degree. So my mom has always been adventurous and loved to travel. So this wasn't anything out of the ordinary for her to just come to a different country and be here and set up a new life for us. Bravo, mom. Boy, that's yeah. amazing. It's really amazing. So, yeah. so I love talking to another lawyer. So tell me about like you're in law school. How did you land on adoption? Yeah, that's a great question. So when I gave my life to the Lord, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. I was in law school and I actually thought I'd go into ministry because when I got saved, I just had such a hunger to know God and I wanted to go to Bible school. I just felt so drawn to ministry in Bible school and studying the word of God in depth. And I wanted to spend all my time studying the Bible. So I thought, you know, maybe I should just go to Bible school because I literally am spending all my time studying the Bible. Uh -huh. And so in college, I decided to do a theology major because I thought maybe that would help me kind of prepare for Bible school. Uh -huh. And it was there that I, um, after I got my life to the Lord, was in college I just was like, Lord, I don't like, what should I do? I don't know what to do. Is it a theology major? Am I just, you know, making this decision for myself? What do you want me to do? And I just will never forget. It's maybe one of the two times in my life I heard the audible voice of the Lord. And he told me, I want you to take care of my orphans and widows. And that's what really sparked the journey for me on, okay, well, Lord, how do I do that? Right. That was my next question. But he didn't really give me a lot of direction. And I just had to trust with peace, trust his word and just trust the desire had to be a place in my heart. That's how I ended up as a lawyer. <laughs> it wasn't what I was planning in, in, um, in college, but it was just through praying, following God's peace, following just the desire had place in my heart that I ended up in law school. I thought it would be a great way to advocate for children. And that's what really drew me to law school. Mm -hmm. So that's how I ended up there. <laughs> that's so good. Um, yeah. You know, I always love to hear women's stories of why you went to law school. Mine is a very simple one. I wanted to right wrongs and I wanted to advocate 
for poor folk like where I come from because I saw my mom and dad suffer so much because they didn't have an attorney on speed dial. You know what I mean? So I just, that's why I went to law school. So I love your story too. The Lord said, you will take care of my orphans and widows. Oh my God, this is so awesome. Okay. So tell us about a little bit, maybe about your early adoption, like lawyering years and how you came to realize there was this other service that needed to be provided. Yeah. Yeah. So what happened was as an adoption lawyer, I obviously can only provide legal services for that. And what I found out is there are a lot of different types of adoptions, which is actually something that a lot of people don't realize. There are international adoptions, kinship adoptions, foster care adoptions, um, step parent adoptions, newborn adoptions, or so many different types of adoptions. But what I found out as a lawyer is that a lot of people are really kind of stuck and fascinated with newborn adoption specifically. And so that's kind of what happened. I just started getting calls from families who wanted to adopt a newborn. And that's how I really got in the world of newborn adoption. Before that, I was doing a lot more step-parent adoptions and foster care adoptions. So I just thought that's interesting. I honestly didn't even know that you could just adopt a newborn in my practice because I was getting so many other types of adoptions. I just started hearing more about newborn adoptions. And it was one particular couple that came to me, Molly and Tom. They were really young. They had just gotten married. were so excited to start their family. They were high school sweethearts. And they called my law office and they said, hey, we want to adopt a baby. What do we do? So typically, I would just kind of explain to them, you know, I can't help you because I'm a lawyer, but you can use this agency. And I would just kind of guide them on where to go. Well, this particular couple, two years later, I decided to check in on them because I routinely do that with clients just to see where they're at. And you're awesome. I was shocked. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm like, what, what's going on? Is the baby come home? Like, you know, yep. and they just told me that they had gotten scammed by the lawyer and most agencies would not take them because they were only married for a year. And I did not know any of this regarding newborn adoption. Like I was just dipping my toes in it. And I thought, what? Like what? You got scammed by a lawyer. Like lawyers are supposed to be legit, you know, in my innocence, like Scared too. <laughs> um, and so that's really what sparked me. They were just so innocent, so pure. They just loved kids and they were devastated. So I just thought to myself, let me go research more about this. Like, why are why did they get scammed? That's when I realized and got into the world of newborn adoption. And I started seeing all the misinformation and the crazy stuff that you find online from Facebook groups to Instagram to YouTube videos. And newborn adoption has become this sensation in America that just really became a business, really, where people are just being scammed and people use it for profits. I didn't know this when I started my law office, but I was just helping folks out here. And that's how I got introduced to the newborn adoption world and decided that I needed to do something to help these families like Tom and Molly um, to, to not be scammed and to not give up on the process just because they didn't know how to walk through it. Right. Oh my goodness. Okay. So when did you actually like, here's your shingle for attorney, but now you're being a coach, you're helping adopt Christian families adopt. So how long had you been doing that? And tell, take me through the earlier stages of that meeting specifically, um, how you helped your first couple of clients specifically so that we better understand. Yeah. 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 So after I did the research, after the whole Tom and Molly thing, I started researching. It took me probably six months to a year. I really wanted to find out what was going on out there. And I just heard the Lord whisper to me, hey, I want you to put something together to help these families. And mm -hmm. so I just started going in Facebook groups, asking questions, just seeing what people were saying. What were they asking? What was their, what was their pain? And so I interviewed probably 50 different families, just asked them, hey, can you just tell me what's going on? What's your journey like? And that's mm -hmm. how I really got an idea of what people were struggling with, what they really needed. Um, and that's how I put my program together. It was based on what they were struggling with. I put the program to help them through their struggles and to help them save a lot of money and time. And mm -hmm. so in 2020s, when I, I launched the Adoption Success Accelerator for the first time, I had six families that came in there. They trusted me to help them um, walk through the process. And man, it was so, we had, it was six weeks live together. It was so amazing. We had such a good time. And most of them are out now with their adoptions and they've kind of moved on now. And they're still advocating for me today. Oh, if I cool. ask them to give me a review, they'll be like, yes, use the crease. It was just so great. <laughs> um, and it's just been ever since after that, it just kind of has skyrocketed from there. And I was on YouTube telling people about it. 
I started a Facebook group about it and that's, and I just try to get the word out as much as I can to help as many families as I can since then. Yeah. Yeah. I now it's what 30, I think now it's 30, 37 families now that I have from starting with six in 2020. <laughs> that is amazing. 37 yeah. families are blessed mm -hmm. to have that baby at home with them, that adopted child in home with him. That is just amazing. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to come back to your program. I want to talk more about that, but right now I want to transition to you and I coming together. So refresh me if you would, when did we, well, how about this? When did you first discover me? Oh my gosh, Judy, I have been wanting uh, a business coach forever. And my my husband was just like, oh, you're fine. You know, your business is doing fine. You don't need a business coach. Don't invest in it. And, you know, to his point, I had invested in so many things that he was just like, we're not doing another thing, right? I just kept investing and investing, investing in things. Mm -hmm. And I just got to the place in January of this year that I just was, I mean, this was the first year of my entire career since I even became a lawyer that I had no idea what I wanted to do in 2024. That had never happened to me before. Every year I have goals for my, for my family, for my business. And it's something I've done every single year. I know what I'm doing. I know where I'm going this year. It was like, my mind was blank. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to go. I felt so stuck in my business with my law office, with the adoption business, with just my, if I just felt so stuck and I just was praying, I was like, Lord, I don't know what to do. I need you to help me find like get unstuck. And I don't even know why I'm stuck. You know, it was just a funky time. And mm -hmm. so I think it was maybe January, February, I was like, well, let me just Google business coach again, see if something comes up and maybe see, I just think I really need a coach. You know, I think that's what I need. And so I literally Googled and I think five different Christian businesses coaches came up and you were one of them. And I clicked on your website and what got me was that you were loyal. I was like, that's it. She's the one. I mean, it was like, I don't even need to hear anything else. She's a Christian. She's a lawyer. I know she's going to get me. That's all I need. And of course, I read a little bit more about what you provided and read the reviews. And I just thought, that's it. I am going for it. This is what I need. And boy, oh boy, was that exactly what I needed? I mean, it's literally been an answered prayer um, from where I've been stuck. This was God's answered prayer for me. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that's how I found That's how I found you. All praise to the Lord. I mean, yes, seriously. it really he is. Us and prepares us to serve, you know, beautiful clients like yourself. Okay, so, yeah. so what was the biggest problem when you came to me? Like what? What? Like like I understand you were in a little bit of a dry spell, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Judy, I was so stuck. I had bought. I actually wrote down how many courses I bought over since 2020, and I think it's 15 to 20. Oh, wow. That's how. That's how many courses I bought because I am very good at doing things and doing tasks. You know, I can write my 10 tasks for today. As a lawyer, obviously, you have to be able to do tasks and I know how to do tasks. So if I took a course, I would follow the program, but I always neglected the mindset always because I was like, I don't need the mindset. I'm fine. Just show me what to do and I'll do it. But what I, what was happening was that the frustration was building up over the years because I wasn't taking care of my mindset. I was just doing and the results were not happening no matter how much I did. So when I got into 2024, I had done so much, took so many courses, but the one thing I neglected was my mindset, building faith. And it's when I joined your program that the Lord, it was like this aha moment. And the Lord showed me, this is what you've neglected all this time. That's why you've been stuck. And I had been praying for two years for an answer, but he told me, Lucrece, you weren't ready. Because if I had showed you this answer two years ago, my mindset was still, I don't need it. I don't need it. I just need to do. But in 2024, I finally got to the place where it was like, just need to know what to do. I was open to whatever the answer is. I want to take it. And so when I found your program and saw the mindset, it literally was like, oh, the light bulb went off. Oh my gosh. Like I, in these courses I had bought, they talked about mindset but I literally never cared. I never went to any of it. I just completely ignored it on purpose because I thought it was a waste of time. Mm -hmm. um, so your program is so, I mean, it's it's just what I needed. I didn't realize how much the mindset had crippled my business, how I was cripple, 
crippling myself by not taking care of my mindset and building faith, then that's what I found through your program. Um, that is the gold. And now I tell everybody, before you start your business, like work on you, don't do what I did. Work on your mindset first before you start your business so you don't get stuck like I did. That's right. That's right. And so specifically, are you talking about the faith field thought model and how we really focus on? Okay. So can you tell yes. someone just even a little nugget of like the practical side? Like, what does that work look like when you're saying working on your mindset? What does that mean? Absolutely. Okay. So an example from your course, from what I learned uh, from you is, uh, oh, okay. Well, let's let's take this very recent example, right? I'm doing this five-day boot camp right now. And I invited the students in the boot camp to join my accelerator. And it was like crickets on the call. Everybody was just looking at me. Nobody had questions. And I was like, well, I'd love to have you. I'm so excited you came on the call today. And I'll see you guys tomorrow at 11. And then when I left that call, it was like all these doubts flooded, like just flooded my mind. Oh my gosh, did I say something wrong? What it, didn't I do right? Maybe I could have done it better. Maybe my slides didn't work. And so I followed the thought model that you teach and I sat myself down and I said, nope, I wrote down the thoughts. And then I went back to the word of God. What did God say? What has he already said to me that I need to remind myself of right now? And so I went through and I remembered that's called me to business. Okay. So it's okay. <laughs> He's called me and I am an expert. I know what I'm doing. I know that what I said was right. And I helped my clients. And number three, God is going to fulfill his promises to me. So I just went back to what I knew was true and changed my mindset. It's okay. Even if nobody buys, I did what I could, but I built my faith. And so that's what I did. I just went back to, I have to, this is where I needed to get this managed um, no matter what happened. And so that's an example of how I managed my mindset and built my faith um, just yesterday, or was it today? I think it was this morning that I, that I had to stop and do that. Yeah. And so what happened on the heels of you doing that? This is just so great. You, you Yes. Okay. Yeah. Broken. So that's what happened. So I did my thought work. And then within five minutes of getting off the, the training today, I invited them yesterday, but the training today, again, it was crickets. And I was like, oh my gosh. Okay. No, nope. remind yourself of God's word. Put the word there. I meditated on it. And I was like, it's okay. And then five minutes later, I see a sales sign come through my email and somebody had joined the X, my accelerator. And I just thought, God, you're just so good. Like I, I have had two people sign up last month and I hadn't had anybody sign up for eight months. Yeah, let's just talk because about I started that. building my faith. Yes. Let's talk about that a second. Okay. So, yes. so let's finish this up. Okay. So, so yes. cricket don't necessarily mean no interest. And yes. so you thought, oh my gosh, something's wrong. And you went through the whole thing, like all of us do, but then yeah. the faith field thought model, you're like, no, the right people. I said the good things. I serve them well. I'm going to let God be responsible for the results, right? Yes. yes. And what happened? He said, ta-da, yay, thank you. He, I mean, how, how I look at it is he blessed your faith with this client because it was Absolutely. already decided. So that's so good. Okay, so let's go back now. So you joined up me in, I think, end of February? In I the think so. Okay, yeah. end of February. And so you came in not having signed a client in how long? It had been eight months. It had been a long time, dry spell for a long time. Okay. So what was happening then? You came in and then within, I think it was like a month or a month, no, no, four to six weeks. I don't know. You tell me what happened. I think it was within two or three weeks. It wasn't very long because it was in your course that the Lord showed me what was wrong this whole time and why I was so stuck. And this is one of the things that you said that was literally like the Lord speaking to me as you were talking. You said, and I'll never forget, you said, it's not the task, doing the task that brings you the result. It's your faith that brings you the result. And I literally stopped and I was like, it mm. was my light bulb moment. I was like, oh my gosh, I've been doing all these tasks two years. That's why I have no, like, it just, you gave me the answer. And I sat and I meditated on that for probably a good week and just let that sink in. Like, oh, this is, you know, just realizing what I was missing. And I was like, that's it. That's it. Now that I know what was wrong and I know that my answer is building faith, that's what I'm going to focus on now. And I started doing the work. I got your journal. I was working through it every day, building my faith, writing down my, you know, putting all my thoughts up that I'm going to change my thoughts to be this. 
Um, and then it was within two or three weeks that two clients signed up. And I was just, geez, anybody else, I was like, it was like the Lord just literally saying, yep, Lucrece, you're now on the right road. That's what it said to me. Because after a dry spell of eight months, doing, 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 still nothing to focusing on building faith and seeing two clients in, in a month, it was like, I mean, what else do you attribute that to? It has to be God. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. I feel like, I feel like it was like over a weekend. I think, I think like one. Yeah, it was so quick. Yes. <laughs> okay. It was like a couple of days. One and I was like. Yeah. So, so, so good. So, so good. So, yeah. so when you think about your business and what's possible for it this year, just, just, just tell us like, what are you thinking? What are your thoughts? I am, I'm just open to anything is possible now coming in this year thinking, I don't even if I'll make any money this year, maybe I'll quit. I mean, I was literally on the verge of quitting my business and just shutting the doors and being like, I'm done. I've tried for three years, um, two or three years. But now I'm just like, wow, I'm the CEO of a multi six figure business. And I know that even if a hundred thousand dollars come in one month, I know that at least that much will come out this year. Not because of anything that I'm doing. That's like just doing, 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 but because now that I see the answer and I see that building faith was what I was missing all along and my God can do anything. It's like, I'm believing for anything now. Like Literally, I could make a million dollars this year and they would all be God, you know, no more. There's no more ceiling I'm putting on myself like I did before, but I'm just trusting that as I do the work, God will bring the results. Mm -mm, so good. Hallelujah. Oh my gosh. All right. Last question for someone that has been thinking about the accelerator. They're like, oh, I don't know. Is this really worth it? Um, you know, and maybe somebody who like you, uh, has kind of neglected the mindset. Cause I, that was me. That's so funny. But two lawyers like, come on, let's go, let's work it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the mindset's so important. So someone that's sitting on the fence, can you mm -hmm. tell them anything that you would recommend or something specific about the program besides what we've already talked about that mm -hmm. might help them understand the level of support that they get inside? Oh yeah, yeah. So all these other courses that I've taken before, they were group coach type of courses and you get on a call there's a bunch of people on there you have to wait your turn and I mean I kind of I, I did it because I wanted to know how to do certain things so I you know reluctantly came on the calls but this is the first um container that I've been a part of where like you actually respond to questions and when I send something about my mindset that you respond within 48 hours in three years of having my my coaching business, I've never, there's not one course I've taken and I've taken probably 15, not one that I've taken that's been that personalized. And so I would say that that's what stands out the most for me. And that's actually what really sold me into um, your, your container was that, was, wow, I can actually send you something and you will respond, not some other coach that you've trained is gonna respond or put it in the Facebook group and everybody else respond, but you are actually responding which is huge because then I just felt safe. Like, okay, the person who's the expert will actually give me feedback. And so I know that I'm going the right way versus in these other courses, you had one person to like, I don't know, 20 people showing up on the call and they had an hour. And so it was just like, you have five minutes to ask your question, five minutes to be done. And so it was really hard to really get all the, the support that you needed, even if you showed up to every call. So I would say the support, it really is unparalleled. Um, from how many courses I've taken, I've never felt this supported um, mm. since, awesome. yeah, since I, I started taking your course, so. And you're just getting started. I mean- I'm just getting started. Here, and here we are, so that's great. All right, yeah. Lucrece, well, congratulations for all of your success and, you know, God is good and the, the impossible really is possible. And that's yes. why we, we're pursuing that, right? That's amazing, okay. So thank you for that. Let's go back to the, your adoption coaching. So I will say that I was surprised that there is so much that the world is putting out there that is not helpful. And so I'm just curious, do you um, have like a, like a, I'm sure you have a process, but can you tell us about a methodology that your proprietary methodology as to how you help your clients through the process? Oh yeah, absolutely. So I call it the ABC method <laughs> to, it. because it's so complicated for people. My method is the ABC method. It's super simple. 
And so basically we start with phase one is when you get to discover the type of adoption that's best for your family. I make my families choose um, the type of adoption that's best for them before we move on because that's the foundation. And then in phase two, this is when we build your adoption team. So when I say that, I mean, we talk about what state to adapt in, what professional you should work with and all of that good stuff. So that's phase two. And then phase three is when you actually move forward with your adoption by doing your home study and um, giving your money to somebody. You do that in the last phase of the program. So it's super simple. It's just ABC, three phases. And that's what, that's how I help um, guide my families through the process so that they can do it without, um, you know, losing a lot of time and money. Yeah. And not getting scammed by, by a, an attorney. I mean, that person should lose their license. That's just yes. ridiculous. Yeah. Absolutely. So talk about creating safety. You create safety for your clients to know I'm an adoption lawyer. So I know a few things, but also mm -hmm. I have, you have studied so that you can open their um, access to resources that they otherwise wouldn't have access to. Absolutely. So that's amazing. Um, all right. So, so what, for those that are listening who may be considering adoption, what would be one gold nugget as we wrap up here that you would want to make sure they know? Um, and, and it could be anything like, you know, what's one thing that they may not know that they, they need to consider or be aware of? Yeah. Yeah. One of the big misconceptions in the newborn adoption world is that if you want to adopt, you need to start your home study right away. Like that's the first thing you should do. Don't do that. Don't do not do that. <laughs> and this is why I say that your home study is actually tailored to the type of adoption that you choose. So if you haven't decided that, yes, I'm all in for newborn adoption, or yes, I'm all in for foster care adoption, or yes, I'm all in for international adoption, and you just do your home study randomly, if you change your mind later, you will have to redo your home study. This is one of the things that people do that causes them to lose thousands of dollars because your home study will cost you at least $1,500. So just by that, people lose so much money just by following advice that they find online saying, do your home study. Um, and so that's one thing I would say, do not do your home study first. And I have a YouTube channel to where you can go and I have so many videos to give you a lot of pointers about what to do or not to do, but definitely do not do your home study first. <laughs> mm, excellent. And I'm going to drop the link to your YouTube channel here um, in the show notes. So I understand you have a freebie for our audience. Can you tell us about that? Yes. Yeah, so the freebie is just, it's to help you understand how to decide the adoption that's best for your family or how to help you see the pros and cons and the cost of each side by side, because you won't find a lot of streamlined information in one place. When you're Googling, you'll find information here, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there. So the free guide, it's your adoption guide to help you see all the different types of adoption side by side, help you see the pros and cons and costs side by side, and to help you make that decision. Um, yeah, just, just to make it easier for you. So you can just go to the website and um, go get the free guide. And I hope it helps you <laughs> to see oh, all the adoptions available out there for you and helps you see them side by side. Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm going to drop the link for that inside the show notes. Okay. Yeah. So for those that are like, I love Lucrece, where can I find her though? I understand YouTube and I'm going to get that freebie, but where maybe on social can they connect with you? Yeah, you can find me on Instagram. I'm also on Facebook, um, but yeah, connect with me anywhere, Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, or send me an email <laughs> or you go to my, my website too, lucrecebunny.com and I will surely get back to you. Awesome. I will have all that inside. Lucrece, thank you so much for your time this Friday afternoon. You're one amazing, powerful woman of God.